Hi everyone. On January 31st, there was a catastrophic collapse of a hangar building that was under construction at the Boise, Idaho airport. It was a structural steel frame hangar and apparently a truss was being put into place when there was a sudden catastrophic collapse. The reports indicate that it was a collapse of the structure first, which then caused the crane boom to collapse second. But uh, there's still a lot of details yet to be uh, produced in this whole story. So what I wanted to do is just, in general, give you an overview of what we know so far about how this could have occurred. And uh, basically, key areas that I think investigators will probably focus on initially uh, as they conduct their investigation to ferret out exactly what happened here to prevent such tragic occurrences from happening in the future. Uh, it's been reported that there were three uh, workers that were killed, another nine injured, five of which were injured critically. So this is a tragic event. So it's been reported that the erection contractor for the hangar building was Big D Builders. They were erecting a 39,000 square foot hangar. The crane company was Inland Crane. Overall, the project is stated to cost $8.1 million. So I want to focus on some of the early statements that were made here in this investigation. I want to go through a few quotes that were reported by Idaho News 6 reporter Roland Beres in his interview with Inland Crane Vice President Jeremy Hayner. And the quote here is, Based on accounts of Inland Crane operators, construction workers on site, and the steel erecting contractor, we believe that no action by inland crane operators or the crane itself was the cause for the structural failure of the hangar. So that's their early position. He goes on to say, at the time of the accident, the final crane was in service to place an end trust. When the building collapsed due to an unknown structural failure, the crane boom, the hydraulic arm of the equipment snapped on impact. So that sounds like something collapsed with the truss or the overall framework of the support for this building and it perhaps produced a, a high dynamic load on the crane boom, which caused it to snap and, of course, release any remaining load at, that it was trying to lift at that point. Now, I want to go on to this other quote because I think it may be a key issue here, but we'll, certainly we'll find out. Again, I don't want to act like in this video I know exactly what happened. I want to point out what's been reported as well as generically what investigators would likely want to focus on during the course of their investigation. Hayner said that there were four cranes on site, but three of the four cranes were removed from the job site at the direction of the steel erection contractor. Since this building is under construction, OSHA will investigate the cause of this tragedy. And OSHA, by statute, has six months in order to complete their investigation, which is interesting because had this been a completed building that collapsed, NIST the National Institute of Standard and Technology would have been the one doing the investigation, and they typically take 18 to 24 months to complete their review and issue a report. So from that earlier quote from the Inland Crane Vice President, it sounds like there were four cranes on site, but three had been moved away and only one was being used to do any lifting at the time of the collapse. So that makes me wonder, was one crane adequate to do this job? Was it an issue of the crane being overloaded? or perhaps the way the rigging was done to pick up the load. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, various aspects of construction, crane rigging refers to the safe securing of a load using different pieces of equipment before a lift. And more complicated lifts or lifts involving a very, very large structure can involve multiple cranes, several rigging lines. It's a very complex operation. But again, here it sounds like only one crane was being operated during this lift before the collapse occurred. Lifting often follows rigging as it involves the hoisting and movement of the load to any way around the work site. Now let's look at basic hoisting and rigging guidelines. It's essential to determine the proper style, size, length, diameter, and thickness of the sling needed for the application prior to use. So it could be a sling, it could be a steel cable that runs from the crane and is attached to the object being lifted. And this is more specific to slings, but obviously you don't want to tie a knot in your, in your cable or your sling. Rigging equipment must, must not be loaded in excess of its safe working load. And then hooks must be provided with safety latches. So was it a failure of the rigging? Was it an issue of improper rigging in terms of not having enough lines or 
the position of the lines? Did they cause overstress of the steel member as it was being lifted because there weren't enough points of attachment for this rigging? Again, these are all things investigators will look at. Now, generically, whenever there's been any type of load collapse or a failure like this, and also it brings down the crane boom, uh, from a geotechnical engineering standpoint, one thing that always occurs to me is, is this a bearing capacity failure? And in this case, I think that's maybe unlikely, but just by way of background, a lot should go into assessing how well the soil beneath the crane can support both the crane and the loads from the, the lift that are being applied. Here you see an outrigger on a crane that's used to transfer the load from the crane to the ground. And a friend of mine's involved, he's an engineer with a, a major contractor and he assesses what needs to be done from a bearing capacity standpoint before cranes are set up at major construction sites. So what's the concern here? Well, if the outrigger isn't big enough or if the soil's too, too weak, you can induce what's called a bearing capacity failure where the shear stresses from the load application into the soil exceed the available shear strength, that is the resisting forces in the soil to resist that load application. And of course, when bearing capacity failures occur, there's rapid settlement and soil movement that causes uh, movement of whatever structures overlying this zone of failed soil. And you see sometimes they'll use mats underneath the bearing pads on the outriggers to distribute the load to a larger area so that the contact stress is less in the soil. And then sometimes they'll build uh, crane mats for this same uh, purpose. So again, I don't necessarily think it's a bearing capacity issue, but again, that's something they should look at. I think uh, the, the thing that really s stands out to me is that there were four cranes involved, apparently erecting the structural steel for this hangar. And on the day of collapse, only one of them was being used. So were other cranes removed prematurely? Was uh, there an inherent problem with one of the structural steel members that wasn't evident? Again, we'll let the investigators uh, do their research here, but it seems to suggest at least initially the possibility that there may not have been enough cranes being used for this pick or with the one crane that was being used, maybe there was an issue with the rigging, uh, not enough points of attachment that caused uh, overstress of the structural member. And if you believe the eyewitness accounts that the truss structure, the frame of the hangar building collapsed first and basically yanked on the crane boom from the attached lines and then caused the crane boom to fail, that would be one scenario. The other scenario is in that in fact, the crane boom itself collapsed first and then dropped the load. But again, that's contrary to the initial reports. You know, uh, apparently some of the workers that were killed or injured were in uh, elevated platforms or man lifts. And uh, I've worked on a number of bridge sites where I had to go up in a man lift while somebody was moving something with the crane. And I never liked to be in that position because you're, you have a harness and you're hooked to the frame of the man lift. And if something happens, you're just a sitting duck. There's, there's nowhere you can go. I mean, it takes several minutes to lower the basket on the man lift to the ground. So I feel for the people who are involved in this tragedy and hopefully there'll be solid answers coming out of this that can be applied on future construction projects. So those of you who are engineers or involved with construction, I'd be interested in what your thoughts are about this situation from what's known at this point and what you likely suspect could have occurred. I'd like to send out a shout out to the channel members. Your support helps me continue posting new videos at least once a week. I also like to thank those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another means of support. And of course, I'd like to thank those of you who have commented, liked, and subscribed to these videos. I'm really pleased with the growth of the channel and the engagement that I'm having with, with all of you. Uh, in the comments section and through uh, other methods of communication where some of you have reached out in, in different ways. So this has been really exciting for me. Again, if you have any specific thoughts about this hangar building collapse, please let me know in the comments section. Also check out the link in the description to download my guide to the largest civil engineering disasters of the last 100 years. Thanks very much, everyone.